a simple plan, a four-year development cycle followed by the release of Metal Gear 3 on the brand new 3DO console. A console that was not living up to the promises of success and widespread acceptance by the entire population of the planet. So Konami, instead of releasing this game on the 3DO, decided to release a different game, something called Police Knots. It did not do well at all. So the plan to make Metal Gear 3 for the 3DO was dropped, instead of being replaced with the idea of making the game for the PlayStation console. No problem, slight problem. They're not what you would call the most compatible systems ever made between one another, so it required a bit of redoing everything. But doing so with the aim of making what they called the best PlayStation game ever made. And to be fair, they weren't throwing out everything related to the development of the game, they still had a lot of the groundwork, you know, with actually designing it, it's just that the building part was not compatible. So they had to build a brand new game, in essence, over the course of about three years. By this time the PlayStation was not a new console anymore. To make something that would be called the best PlayStation game ever would require a lot of work, a lot of creativity, a lot of effort, a lot of um, things to which a development cycle that basically started four years ago really helped. But there was well, another problem. It had been eight years since Metal Gear was released. Nobody outside of Japan remembered it. Why would they? It was just a dumb little NES game that, yeah, was quaint, but honestly not all that great. And by this time, the PC market in Japan died. No one remembered the MSX anymore. Nobody really expected a sequel to Metal Gear anymore. Why would they? It's been almost a decade. To prevent confusion, the game was renamed. It wasn't Metal Gear 3 anymore. It was Metal Gear Solid. That solid meaning that it was you know, solid, it was 3D, it was different, it was touchable, if you will, it's, it's a thing, they say. And it ties into the name of the main character, Solid Snake, which was also the name of the second game. It was 2D, and not solid, and what I'm saying is that they could have kept the name, because the confusion of the story would have still sort of remained. But it didn't really matter in the long run. Konami spent about 8 million dollars to promote the game worldwide, which, let's face it, is not really a heck of a lot. Well, currently it's not. It was a bit more back in 1998, but they weren't really expecting it to blow the roof off the house. Again, this was a sequel to a eight-year-old game on a platform that no one cared about now and that not a lot of the world actually had access to. So when it sold six million copies and started a franchise that rakes in hundreds of millions of dollars, Konami knew it had something on its hands, it had a golden goose. But why did it sell so well? Why did the third game of a series that no one remembered sell so well? The answer is simple, it lived up to the promise of being the best PlayStation game ever made. Now this comes from someone that didn't have a PlayStation and honestly isn't all that into console games for the most part, but mechanically, and in terms of presentation, in terms of, I would say even story, in some ways, it is an absolute masterpiece. Metal Gear Solid is about as close as flawless to a game as games have ever gotten. Sure, there are annoying things in it, there's limitations in it, but they're part of it. They're part of what makes it it. It's like, what would be StarCraft if playing it really well didn't cause your hands to require surgery after a couple of years? It's actually better than that in the non-kill-you kind of way. Metal Gear Solid put you back in the boots of Solid Snake. Man had spent the last couple of years hiding out somewhere in Alaska, drinking and training about 50 dogs for sled races. He gets kidnapped by his old CO and convinced in pure Escape from New York style to go do one final mission. One that involves secrets, unknown, battle left buried, a connection to his past and his old unit, Foxhound, that now consists of genetically modified freaks with insane abilities that have taken over a military base and are threatening the world. Also, they kidnapped some guy from the US government and, oh uh, well, yeah, th there may be a Metal Gear involved somewhere around there. And what do these people want? They want the remains of none other than Big Boss himself, the big baddie of the previous two games. 
And unlike the previous games where the story was, well, the second one it was fleshed out enough, here is where it really went full Kojima. You had the ability to talk to people about basically everything you saw around the world. You would have dialogue scenes that lasted for minutes and minutes and minutes on end. You would have cinematic sequences that were genuinely superb at the time. He had the kind of choreography that you would not see in games. The kind of attention to detail in the movement of the characters that was, I wouldn't say unthinkable in 1998, but it looked better than some pre-rendered sequences you would see and they were all done in engine, with all sorts of fancy effects like slow motion, spans, zooms, dramatic angles. This had style. This had substance. This was Metal Gear style as we know it today. Pardon, I mean Metal Gear style at its best as we know it today. And even though the series gets a bad rap for having maybe too much dialogue for its own good, it wasn't yet at that level with Metal Gear Solid, I think. Sure, the intro did last a while and gameplay would get interrupted quite often with dialogue, but it didn't feel like it was too much. Not when the gameplay was so good. This was a game that did its darndest to be believable. Where every little thing had a purpose, where every little thing had a point to it. You could carry cigars with you, a solid snake, they, they would kill you, but you could use the smoke to see lasers and avoid alarms and trip mines. You would leave trails in the snow that people could follow and notice your presence. And most of all, you had a world to explore. Yes, the previous ones were also about exploration, but this one, this one gave you more tools, more options to actually resolve the situations you were in. And being 3D meant that you had a whole new well, dimension to your problem solving. It wasn't superbly made in 3D like with stratification superbly there in mind, but it was there. You could even look around in first person to see the world you were in and better realize exactly how you would need to go from one place to another because the basic game was still top down. You still had the radar, you still had the exclamation marks on the enemies, they would even show up on the rats you would stumble upon in some air vents somewhere, which made them very funny. It was an excellent sneaking game, though you would have certain areas that were more geared towards kill everybody now. Those were unavoidable sometimes, they were story related usually, but since it came in 1998, it came like a month or two before Thief, this was a golden year for anybody that alone love stealth games. It was an amazing year. It was the year of sneaky bastards doing things in the shadows and then punching people in the face with a gun or a sword. It depends. Yeah sure, when you break it right down, Metal Gear Solid was in a way a bit of a rehash of the previous game's ideas, but I mean that's that's par for the course for any series. They tend to follow the same beats, tend to go down the same paths, and it really didn't matter that much. I mean it was the third one in the series, it's been almost a decade in the last one, so why would it be any different? But then things started hatching Kushima's brain. Now it started here, it started with uh, the whole idea of, you know, maybe you shouldn't trust what people say, especially people in power, maybe there's someone behind it all, maybe someone behind it that really tries its best to hide it exists and do evil things and speakable things and generally be devious. And then he combined that with the idea of being a soldier, the idea of glorifying violence, of glorifying war, of what it actually means to be in a combat situation, and um, taking pictures of the female characters in the game for some reason. And VR missions, I mean, what is reality after all? Are you sure you can trust that you are really in the real world? You're not just some brain stuck in a jar that's made to believe that it's living a real life when in fact you're just in a jar with some electrodes in your head, well not a head, but in your brain directly. And yeah, you're in a game, so is a game even real? Can it have the expectation of you believing it is to be real? The does it even matter? Maybe it does. But all that didn't fit into Metal Gear Solid 1. He left most of that for the sequel. But before I get to that, I'd like to mention that Metal Gear Solid 1 had an absolutely proper superb PC version. I mean, the previous games also had PC versions, this was a PC game. A PC series, I mean. But this one worked flawlessly, it still works on Windows 7 amazingly well. You can't buy it anywhere because I think it was published by Microsoft and the rest of the world, so no, well, no, nobody's gonna touch it ever, and it honestly still looks well even compared to the PlayStation version. And the second game as well did get a PC version too, though it was significantly less good. Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty was an inevitable game to make. 
I mean, the first one sold so well that it uh, well, required a sequel. Konami had found a big cash cow and there was still stuff to do with this universe, with, the, with these characters, with this world. It was also extremely controversial for two reasons. One. A gigantic bait and switch. The first part of the game is you reprising the role of Solid Snake. This was part of the demo of the game, a free demo because back in the day Konami wasn't an asshole, where you would have the ability to absolutely enjoy yourself like mad in a finely crafted demonstration of what the full game could offer you. Whereas the full game, when you pass that area, you would no longer be Solid Snake, you would be some guy named Raiden who looked like Raiden and was um, Raiden. Now there's something to be said about the transition of the series from 2D to 3D and you know adding all the elements that would be normal for the stage, like voice acting. David Hayter really, really pulled off a great snake, even though like three quarters of whatever he said was just the last words that someone else told them repeated as a question. Attack with her by Kodak. Kodak? You have a large place in her heart. A large place. You've got a great butt. He felt badass, like the way he talked. Raiden? Raiden felt like the player that is playing Solid Snake and pretending to be badass. And it's intentional. The second problem with Metal Gear Solid 2 was that it, um, it jumped the shark in terms of too much information too many cinematics, too much dialogue, oh god, oh god, please stop, oh god, oh god, oh god. This is past the tipping point of Kojima's insanity where you think, okay, you know, someone needs to slap the pen from your hand, and someone needs to slap you away from the keyboard because there's a thing is too much. But on the other hand, this also fits into the major idea of the game, of information overload. Metal Gear Solid 2 is partially a complete troll job and at the same time it is one of the best games ever made. Mechanically, it is positively flawless. It is an improvement upon the previous one to such a degree, unless you have the PC version that mapped aiming to the keyboard and not the mouse, it mapped the inventory to the mouse, that you will stomach anything in it just to be able to play more of it. And oh lord did it give you more of it, it had a bunch of different versions with so many more missions in it, so much more gameplay that you will not be unsatisfied with it. There is even one version of it that has a skateboarding minigame, a Tony Hawk style with score things and tricks minigame in it. And if you're wondering who would be crazy enough to add something like that in a game that's ostensibly about sneaking, well, Hideo Koshima would be. Koshima Productions. Konami for a time was that insane. And that insanity was astonishingly beautiful. The thing you have to know about this game is that well, for one, it was made to be the last of its series, much like every game in the Legacy of Kings series almost was made to be the last, up to a point. And because it was made to be the last, they pulled out all the stops for it. To this day, outside of the Metal Gear series, outside of, well, another, I think just one other Metal Gear game, nothing has gone into detail as, to put it bluntly, absolutely anal as this before. The mechanics of the game, the AI, the systems put in place with which you interact, will guarantee by themselves near endless opportunities for gameplay, for amusement, for fun, for engagement. This is a game where ice cubes will melt in real time. It's a pointless thing! Absolutely pointless, but it's there. It's sort of like what Star Citizen has with a janitor that cleans up the floor and has an entire system built to handle the puddles that he cleans and make sure that they are actually puddles that are generated naturally and not just textures. This is a game, I mean Metal Gear Solid 2, where the enemies aren't stupid. They'll talk to each other, they will interact with each other. If they see a suspicious box, they won't go, hmm, I wonder what this is, let me turn my back on it. No, they shoot it. They shoot the box and then they pick it up and then they shoot you because you're in it. They'll communicate with each other and to stop them from talking, you can shoot out their radios. You can, I think you can shoot out their guns. I'm not entirely sure about that anymore. And they do their best to see you, sure they have a fixed cone of view, but within that cone they do their darndest. You can be hiding in a locker and they will look at you. If you're leaning too close to the opening of the locker, they'll see you. And the game is a lot more 3D oriented than its predecessor, so you do have a lot more versatility in traversing the terrain. By climbing on things, by climbing down, by shimming on things, 
He also has a lot of parts where you just shoot drones in first person and it's annoying because if you're playing with a mouse you realize oh <laughs> I can't aim with a mouse can I? And then there's the escort bit where you have to make sure Emma gets safely to a point so you can then learn about the incest with Araka and her brother and like I said the game goes into stupid details at some points but the rest of it is so worth it. This is where the traditional Metal Gear Solid formula was perfected. It is flawless. And again it goes into details that few to no other sneaking games or games in general have won. It has smell. Guards detect you by smell. If you find something smelly and step on it or linger around it, the smell will be attracted to you and then it will spread to nearby guards and they will sense you. When you're running past a guard that you knocked out and they're asleep, your character is going to tippy toe across them. It matters that they're asleep. It's a detail so beautiful that it makes every other game ever made seem like an underthought, underdesigned, underdeveloped piece of garbage and laziness. And even today the game still looks amazing and it was made in 2001. Like I said, it came with a bunch of content. The VR missions are back. It's got even missions outside the VR missions. There is stupid missions where you have to find out who stole a sock and beat them. It it's Japanese insanity and it's in most ways a rehash of the first game. It's specifically built to be a rehash of the, well, the previous game, Metal Gear Solid. It's designed that way, it's a troll job, but it is brilliant. And it, the things it has to say about society, about the world, about people, about technology, they are akin to what 1984 was to the world we live in now. That is prophetic as hell and marvelous to behold. And my god, if I have to sit through another discussion between Raiden and Rose, I will probably pass out due to drinking too much. Metal Gear Solid 2 was meant to be the last of its kind, the last of the series, the big hurrah at the end of time. But it sold really well. Better than the previous one. A lot better. So inevitably a sequel was going to be made. But for that and much more you're gonna have to wait a week. Or not, you can you can play all the games now if you're on PlayStation or consoles will have uh, PlayStation. No, I don't think they're on PlayStation now actually, which is kind of sad. What I'm saying is that you can't buy these games on PC anymore because Konami hates you. But who knows, maybe one day you'll be able to again. So come back next time when we continue the journey to a new age of Metal Gear. Goodbye.